What's up, guys? This is Jacob with Spartan One, and I read an incredible book called The Art of Impossible by a gentleman named Stephen Kotler. What's interesting about Stephen Kotler's book is there's a ton of great stuff in there, but there is an actual system for basically getting into flow state that I found really interesting and really applicable. So basically what it is is it's a five-step process to get into flow state. And flow state is essentially when you are doing a task or a function and you're going into that hyper-present, hyper-tuned in, hyper-focused mentality. So flow state's really cool because if you've ever been like snowboarding or you're just having a really good day at work, you just crank things out. It's essentially a very low resistance space, right? Like you're going through the motions that normally you may have some resistance to or you know, basically you just feel like you have writer's block if you're writing something, right? That's a good example of resistance. Flow states when everything's just clicking. You're just going through shit and you're just knocking it out. So Stephen Kotler's five-step process to getting into flow state are as follows. So say we have something that we've never done before. We're trying to do something like, say we're writing a chapter in a book and we're not a writer, right? The first step is curiosity. So in the five-step process, the first step is curiosity. So you want to go into this project curious and basically be curious about all the aspects of it. So if you're writing, asking yourself, how can I write this better? What, what if this is a really good article? What would that look like to have people you know, see this or read this and be like, wow, this is an amazing piece of content. What would it feel like if I was a professional writer, if I was really getting paid a lot for this? You know, what would that do? And what that does is that kind of starts the momentum by amplifying the curiosity and using that curiosity to basically explore different aspects of what we're doing. The second part is getting passionate about something. And passion, as described by Kotler, is basically the intersection of mul multiple points of curiosity. So if we're curious about something and we're interested in more than one aspect of something, that is the underlying foundation for becoming passionate about something, right? I'm passionate about baseball. I love the teams. I love, you know, going to hit the ball. It's fun to, to catch the ball. It's fun to talk stats with my friends, right? I become passionate about something because I have multiple intersections of curiosity that essentially make that something that I want to be involved with more. So once we go through curiosity, then we build passion through multiple points of curiosity. We go into the purpose-driven aspect of it. When we have passion for something, tying purpose to whatever we are passionate about gives us essentially a bigger impact a bigger ripple effect with which we can operate and tie whatever we're doing to right so if i'm passionate about baseball i start a youtube channel so that my expertise can be shared with others on the topic of baseball meaning that when i engage in my activity there's going to be value for others in it too there's going to be a cause larger than myself once we have curiosity passion purpose, which ties it to a, something bigger than ourselves, then comes mastery. So this is where people can kind of get a little bit backwards is you want to go do something, but you feel that you need to have the skills to do it, but you're not curious about any of it. You don't have any passion behind it. Naturally, there's a lot of resistance because those three steps haven't been achieved, the curiosity, the passion, and essentially the purpose, right? Once those three mechanisms are in place, what that does is that gets your biology and your nervous system to actively engage in something. Because there's so much momentum from those three things, the skill-based acquisition of something, which generally is the hardest part to basically master, right? Like if you're going to learn how to play basketball from scratch and you're not very athletic and you never shot a basketball before, you don't even know the rules – there's a lot of dimensions that you would have to master to get to a proficient level. So stacking those three things prior to basically going and doing the skill acquisition is crucial because that gives you the momentum to do the skill acquisition and it actually makes the skill acquisition fun. So the fourth step is mastery and understanding those skills that you need to really master in order to be a badass at whatever you're doing. The fifth and final one is your mission statement and your goals. 
So if you have a mission statement of, I'm going to be the best basketball player in the world, what you would want to do is you would want to go, okay, well, what does that look like? What are some time frames that I could achieve that in? What can I do on a yearly, monthly, and daily basis to ensure that I reach that goal within a reasonable amount of time, right? Now, maybe being the best basketball player in the world is somewhat subjective, and it may take you longer than you'd want, and you'd want to quantify whether or not you're in a position to really crush that, but that was your goal, you would say, okay, well, Kobe Bryant is like this. I see him train this many hours a day. I can put forth, put forth this amount of training per day, et cetera, et cetera. This is the more tactical version. But by leveraging this system, what's so powerful about it is that basically every aspect of this is designed to get your neurochemistry and your biology engaged in the process and to activate as much flow state as possible. So sequentially, when you leverage curiosity, you leverage passion, you leverage purpose, you leverage mastery, and then you leverage goal setting in your mission statement, in that order, you crescendo up to a state of flow. And that's the whole goal, because when we're in flow state, it's been recorded that we can essentially get 70 to 80% more work done in that flow state. So that's what's cool about this system is it's basically a systematized way to get into flow state. And I highly recommend the book. It's called The Art of Impossible if you guys want to check it out. So that's pretty much it for the video. If you guys like more content, you know where to find me, SpartanOneElite.com. Cheers, and I'll see you in the next video.